Now we can test for uh, home skedasticity or heteroskedasticity, which is the assumption violation, um, by programming our regression analysis. So we go analysis, regression, we're interested in linear regression. We have to move our chosen variables into the dependent independent box. So we know that customer satisfaction is our dependent variable and that we've got product quality, product freshness as independence and we've also got helpful employees which is question 5a. And what we have to do here is make sure that our statistics and our plots are set at the right level so that we get the data we need to um, validate our assumptions. What we want to do in the first instance is, because um, we're really only interested in um, heteroskedasticity at this stage, is to ignore the statistics aspect and click on our plots. What we're going to do is we're going to see whether our residuals have any pattern or not. So we move Z resid into the Y and we're looking at that against our dependent which is on the X axis. We're interested in seeing whether we've got histogram and normal probability plot, so we can click on continue. Now, we can then run the analysis, and this will give us some indication of whether we've uh, validated or violated our assumption. Now, I'm going to sk um, skim all the way down to the bottom here. And what we're really interested in is these two boxes here, these two charts. What we'd expect from the top chart is um, some consistency along the line, which there is to a certain extent. What we're interested in the second box, and I think this is a much better gauge of um, whether we've got homoskedasticity or heteroskedasticity. Now, you may recall from the lecture that actually homoskedasticity is um, represented when we have no particular pattern. Um, heteroskedasticity, on the other hand, is problematic when we have something like a bow tie shape or a fan. In this particular instance there definitely is some pattern. You can see here at the higher ends uh, there is some, what we'd almost expect from a linear function, there is some general increase um, with our dependent variable uh, against our standardised residuals. And there isn't really very many cases at this lower end of customer satisfaction. Nonetheless, just from the visual inspection, there doesn't seem to be that much of an indication that we've violated this particular assumption. In any ways, what this can do to a certain extent is suggest that our data doesn't fit the model at the level that we would hope and that we're perhaps missing some variables. In this instance though, I'm fairly content that there isn't enough suggestion of any particular um, pattern or any real violation of homoskedasticity. So I would say that this sort of pattern is acceptable and that we could go on with our analysis. Something that is really important in multiple regression, but less so in simple linear regression because it doesn't apply, is testing to see whether our independent variables have any linear or have any linear relationship between them. That can cause some real problems with um, predicting our dependent variable. Okay, um, we do this in exactly the same way as uh, checking for homoskedasticity um, by actually running the regression itself. Um, We've got all the variables that we need already in our regression box ready to run. However, in this instance, in terms of multicollinearity, what we need to test for um, is and make sure that it's available is to look at our collinearity diagnostics. So we click that underneath the statistics pane, click continue, and then we can run our analysis. Now there's two things that we really want to look for here, and that is our collinearity statistics, specifically our VIF values, and also our collinearity diagnostics below. Now in the first instance, our VIF statistics suggest that there may be a problem with collinearity when we have a VIF of four or five and higher. 
When that's the case, that's something we need to look into in more detail. Now, I'm often inclined to actually remove variables where there is a suggestion of collinearity because I've seen it inflate estimates um, and that concerns me. Now, that might be an issue, um, however, when we've got a theoretically built specified model. Um, but when we're just checking to see whether a relationship exists, particularly in market research and social research, um, not, not so much academic and theory building, um, actually removing variables is okay. Now we don't seem to have any problems with the VIF statistic and actually when we look at the collinearity statistic below, we are approaching that critical value of 30 in terms of our condition index, suggesting that there may be some issue between these two variables, product quality and product freshness. Now, to some extent, that might make some sense. Can we really hold product quality constant when there's an increase in product freshness? Is there a relationship between product freshness and product quality? Is quality, in fact, a determinant of product freshness? So as freshness goes up, does quality also go up? However, there isn't enough indication via the VIF and the CI index to suggest or the C index that w that to suggest that there is actually a problem here. So to some extent, we don't need to worry out of proportion. And I would suggest that multicollinearity isn't going to be so much of an issue. A big problem in um, regression analysis is the inclusion of outliers. Outliers can um, inflate the value of our estimates. They can also um, make our model to be less robust than it really is, so it can change the fit. Um, what we often do is remove cases which don't follow the trend that we would expect them to, or they um, are causing the trend, or what we call the trend line, to be um, changed to a value which is uh, undesirable. We can actually look at residual statistics in uh, exactly the same way as we look at multicollinearity and homoscedasticity by running the regression itself. We can also do this by uh, using our scatter plots. Now, to some extent, these can be this can be detrimental. This can be detrimental um, when you're using uh, scales, like at scales, rating scales, because it's let it's it's not as easy to actually estimate or to interpret uh, scatter plot in this way. We use the linear multiple regression, linear regression um, icon here, and in this instance, um, I'm interested in checking for residuals with case diagnostics outside of two standard deviations. Click continue, and OK. Now, I'm going to skim right down to um, our case wise diagnostics because this shows us where we might have some problems i.e. predicting our dependent variable um, because we have inflated standardized residuals so um, cases of data where we have quite a lot of error that we have to contend with and remember I've said that we want minus two and plus two standard deviations from the mean okay and this is quite well reported here in this particular histogram and you can see here there are some definite cases outside of our plus and minus two um, range. More worryingly are these ones here. So whilst I might not be too concerned about those ones that are close to the minus two and plus two, the ones outside this minus four, that suggests we've got some real problems. And we can actually use the case-wide diagnostics to find those. Ah, here we are here. We can see that actually the problem, or several of problems, lie in these two um, cases, 99 and 179, because they've got standardized residuals outside of negative four. Now, I'm quite interested here because looking at these variables, or these cases, these suggest that they might be the cases which were causing a problem before when we looked at our scatter plot. In fact, what I'd like to do 
is remove these and then run our scatter plot and see if we have the same issue. So we're interested in 99 and 179. Be 178 after I've removed one of those variables. And let's run our scatter plot again. Everything's exactly how we'd want it. Click OK. And there you go. If we remember before, we had two, var two cases of data which were uh, sectioned up here, which we thought was quite strange to have a high level of product quality, but a low level of customer satisfaction. And that really cha um, changed our trend line here as we moved up here. So you can see to a certain extent that those outliers should be removed from the analysis. And that's how we um, go about that. In this instance, we're now ready to go on and run our multiple linear regression.